Hello, my name is Scott Auerbach. I'm a pediatric heart failure and transplant cardiologist uh, and an associate professor of pediatrics at the Children's Hospital Colorado and the University of Colorado. Today I will be discussing a publication of a multi-center registry analysis of ventricular cyst device outcomes entitled The Widening Care Gap in Ventricular Cyst Device Therapy. The ventricular cyst devices analyzed in the study are the HeartMate 3, the HVAD, and the Berlin Heart. Both the HVAD and HeartMate 3 are continuous flow devices that are fully implantable in the chest, with only a cable called a driveline exiting the abdominal wall. The Berlin Heart utilizes older pulsatile technology, and the pump sits outside of the chest. The HVAD was the first implantable continuous flow VAD available that allowed children to be discharged home, with worldwide implants beginning in 2010. The HeartMate 3 was first approved by the FDA in 2017. In June 2021, the HVAD was removed from the market due to reports of higher stroke and mortality rates. Removal of the HVAD left a population of children who could no longer be discharged home on VAD, since the Berlin Heart does not allow for discharge from the hospital. The HeartMate 3 easily replaced the HVAD in adults, but it is unclear if the findings from the adult observational studies are relevant across all age groups. This shows the difference in size between the two implantable continuous flow devices. You can see that the HeartMate 3 on the left is considerably larger than the HVAD on the right. This difference in size impacts whether an implantable device will fit in a small child. The analysis had three main aims. Aim one was to understand the outcomes of children and young adults supported by the HVAD. Aim two was to understand the outcomes of children and young adults supported by the HVAD compared to the HeartMate 3. And aim three was to evaluate the outcomes of children supported with the HVAD compared to the Berlin Heart X Core. The cohort included patients enrolled in the PDMAX and Intermax registries. Intermax is the North American registry for data for adults who received an FDA-approved mechanical support device due to advanced heart failure. PDMAX is the pediatric component of Intermax. The Society of Thoracic Surgeons now supports both registries. Competing risk analysis was used to determine the time-related proportion of patients that died on the device, were transplanted from the device, had cessation of support, or were still alive on device. Competing risk curves were generated based on device type and cumulative function curves were compared using Gray's test. Time to event analyses included univariable Kaplan-Meier analysis and multivariable analysis performed with multiphase parametric hazard modeling. This chart compares the characteristics of the Intermax patients under 40 years with an HVAD versus PDMAX patients with an HVAD. PDMAX patients were younger, smaller, and more likely to have a diagnosis of congenital heart disease compared to HVAD patients in Intermax. The Intermax group was more likely to have presented in cardiogenic shock, while the PDMAX group was more likely to have required ECMO prior to implant. This slide shows the distribution of ventricular assist devices by weight. The Berlin heart is shown in blue, the HVAD in orange, and the HeartMate 3 in green. I have highlighted the 10 to 25 kilogram weight range to show the increasing percentage of patients with an HVAD. If you remove the orange HVAD group, a large gap is left that needs to be filled by either the Berlin Heart or the HeartMate 3, and it is not clear that we as a field will be able to fit this larger device into this smaller population. Here we now show Kaplan-Meier survival analysis in patients on an HVAD. When we compared the adult HVAD group to the pediatric HVAD population in unadjusted analysis, we found that survival was significantly lower in the pediatric HVAD group. In multivariable analysis shown in this table, the HVAD performance outcomes differed by age. Pediatric patients aged less than 10 had over a five-fold increase in the hazard for mortality when compared to patients 30 to 40 years of age. In addition, for every increase in year of age, the hazard of mortality increased by 6%, placing older adults at greatest risk. This finding is important and a key message that the field needs to consider moving forward given that the majority of analyses that drive decisions are done in adults, with adult-focused analyses leading to the removal of the HVAD from the market. However, time to death doesn't tell the entire story since patients on VAD support face competing outcomes of transplant, death, and recovery. Shown here are the competing outcomes of transplant in the upper left, death in the upper right, and recovery at the bottom, with pediatric patients in red and adult patients in blue. The cumulative incidence function curve showed significantly more pediatric patients underwent heart transplant. However, there were no significant differences in death and recovery between the pediatric and adult cohorts. We then wanted to compare outcomes of children on the HVAD versus children on the HeartMate 3. 
there was no significant difference in survival between device groups in unadjusted analysis. Given that the removal of the HVAD would affect those at the smallest end of the VAD spectrum most significantly, we wanted to know if HVAD outcomes were similar to Berlin heart outcomes in children 10 to 25 kilograms. We found no significant difference in unadjusted survival after VAD implant. Adverse event rates for patients 10 to 25 kilos were higher in the Berlin Heart group, including a higher incidence of device malfunction and device exchange compared to the HVAD group in unadjusted analysis. There was no difference in the incidence of stroke between device groups. The HVAD performance outcomes were clearly shown to differ by age group. Pediatric HVAD patients were more likely to be transplanted than adult HVAD patients, and the greatest risks of mortality were at the youngest and oldest ends of the age spectrum. There was similar survival for HVAD and HeartMate 3 patients less than 19 years of age, which is in contrast to worse survival for adults on the HVAD compared to the HeartMate 3. While this analysis did point toward a higher mortality in children less than 10 years of age compared to older adults, when examined against the Berlin Heart X Corps, the only other device available for children less than 10 years of age, survival was similar with a concern for more adverse events with the X Corps and inability to discharge patients home. The loss of the HVAD has left a gap in patients 10 to 25 kilograms that will be filled mostly with the Berlin Heart, and discharge will no longer be an option for these patients. However, given the well-known issues of bringing pediatric-specific devices to market and the reliance on innovations for adults, it is essential that future decisions about devices designed for adults take into consideration the impact on pediatric patients. I would like to thank my collaborators at uh, PDMAX and STS, uh, the Data Coordinating Center uh, at CURSO, uh, and all of my co-authors for their uh, efforts and collaboration on this project. If you'd like to learn more about the study, using the information shown on the screen.